Welcome back to the vlog and welcome here to Papua New Guinea. If this is your first time, I'm doing a solo international flight down to Australia. It's a three hour flight. I'll tell you why I'm doing it in a minute. I've got to get my clearance to get out of here. I'm supposed to be going right this minute. So let's call up, get our clearance, taxi out of here, take off, and then I'll let you guys know what we're doing. And I'm going to be going through also like paperwork and things like that. So you guys can see what it actually takes to be able to do an international flight if you've never done one. Um, well, then this will be interesting to you. So let's go up and go ahead and call up for our clearance. Jackson, Ground Papa 2, November Tango Echo, requesting airways clearance cans. Papa 2, November Tango Echo, Jackson, Ground. TC clearance, 5-6 uh, to capsule, and cruise 1-8000, Skog 7-4-3-4. Departures 56 to Capso, climb 18000, 7434, Papa 2, November Tango Echo. Before I forget, I'm going to put the code in now because nobody oh do I like forgetting to put the codes in. All right, they said 18000. I'm going to go ahead and turn it all the way up to 18000 now. They might give me a little bit of different clearance and like holding different altitudes when I get out of here, depending on how much traffic is in the area, but more than likely, Going that way, they'll just let me climb. First thing I want to do is make sure that I've got my fuel in here correctly. 2,090 pounds on here, so basically full up on both tanks. And I should be able to land down in Australia with the right amount to get back here on my flight here in a couple of days. Let's go ahead and get our ATIS. Port Moresby Airport. Information, Papa. Time, 2121 Zulu. Expect instrument approach, runway 14, wind 140 degrees, 5 knots, maximum 10 knots, visibility 10 kilometers or more, haze, cloud, few 1000 feet, scattered 2500 feet, temperature 26, 2.24, QNH 1011, caution, Bird strike hazard exists within flight strips. Acknowledge information, Papa. Jackson Ground, Papa 2, November Tango Echo, requesting a start up with information, with Papa. Uh, Tango Echo, start up, November Tango Echo. All right. Make sure my fuel is on, igniters, ox pop. Low start. I'm watching my NG first, over 14%. Once my oil pressure comes in, at least to the bottom of the red. Introduce our fuel. Everything starts going up. Fuel flow, NG, ITT is now going up at a nice slow rate. I'm really watching the ITT the most. Just what it peaks out at. 666. Generator. Alternator, get a prop forward. Auxiliary bus. And it's 87 degrees in here, already at 8.22 in the morning. All right, now that we've got our air going, let's put the rest of it in. I've already got my basic empty weight in here because we've got all the seats out. My co-pilot seat is taken out. I've got a bunch of other stuff taken out of here that we don't need. So, also, what we could do here is you can see on my weight and balance, I've got zeros on all of my seats. I've got equipment minus eight. But then I also have a life um, raft, and it's a 10 passenger one, so that's 20 and a half kgs. And then I've got one vest, so let's just put it down as the, the two vest, whoops, wait, all the wrong one, there we go. Two vests, it's not five kgs, it's one and a half, but with our pilots and things like that, we have an air tank on here. We like to think that we could actually use that in a case of emergency, but the reality is, I don't know. <laughs> oh. Um, let's go ahead and hit done there, and we're going to apply that to all legs. Then actually, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and throw my vest on. Forgot we're going to be flying over water. I might. Our fuel is on our caps, I've already checked. We'll check our controls. Those are good, our TAWS is enabled. Switches and instruments got up to 18,000. We're at 6,600, but we can also come right over here and go on our depart page, take off performance. That tells us our VREF right there at 60 knots. So that's what we're going to rotate at, I guess, not our VREF, but 
Pickup performance, VR I should say, is 60 knots. The thing I don't really like using about this is I like to put in my landing V-Ref as well in case of an emergency. I would have that, and I've had to use it before. So, takeoff, 60, so 71 knots. Flaps are set at 20. Put our flight plan in here. Journey 64, cruise 10,000, scope 0415. Up, all the way back around here. Six four, cruise one zero thousand, score code zero four one five. Now we're gonna up. Our trims are set up. Jackson, ground Papa two November Tango Echo requesting taxi. With information, Papa. Uh, Tango Echo taxi one four right. Time check two seven. Go ahead, POV. One POV. Clear to taxi one four right. No, or Papa Tango Echo. Okay, so let's get our lights on. You're going to hear me say Papa 2 November Tango Echo, but if you see my other videos, I only say November Tango Echo. Well, when you're doing international, you have to say your full call sign. But then after you've got it established, then you can say Papa Tango Echo and shorten it down. So, yeah, there's a good chance I'm going to screw it up a couple of times. Yes, road, take a road mic. And the controllers here in New Guinea are going to screw it up a little bit because they're not used to having us go that often down to Australia either. You can go Bravo Mike, taxi one for right, time two seven half. Taxi one for right, you can go Bravo Mike. Alright, one for right, I'm going to go ahead and set up my next frequency, my next two actually, so that I have everything ready to go. I can just quickly switch over, 125 decimal 8. Jackson Top Apollo 2, November Tango Echo holding point one for right, ready. Uh, to November Tango Echo Tell good morning line up ready one for right. Line up one for right, Papa Tango Echo. Alright, ignition strobes and lights. Our harnesses are locked. Twenty nine degrees, so fifteen forty. Papa Tango Echo runway one for right, big right hand contact radar airborne, clear for takeoff. One four right, right turn, radar airborne, clip takeoff, Papa 2, November Tango Echo. Takeoff clearance, ignition condition, flaps 20, fuel and harnesses, checklist is complete, 1470. So they didn't give me any altitude restrictions, so I'm allowed to go ahead and go all the way up to 18,000. All right, 1540 on the torque. Torque is set, airspeed's alive. There's our 50 knots and continuing. There's road. Yes, good morning. Take a broke mic. Ready. One for right. Take a broke mic. Tell good morning. Line up and wait. One for right. Line up and wait. One for right. Take a broke mic. Throw over 85 and over 300 feet. We'll go 10 degrees of flaps. Watch out, bird. We'll go zero degrees of flaps. Jackson Raider, good morning, November Papa 2, November Tango Echo, Jackson Raider, 8000. Papa 2, November Tango Echo, Jackson's Raider, identified. Go ahead and put our engine in the fire, our normal, our igniter's turned off. And let's go ahead and start making our right hand turn. Let's just go ahead on heading mode. And I'm just going to trim it out for, let's just go on up to closer to 100 knots so I get up to a cooler altitude a little bit quicker than just cruising up at 115 knots. This cord right here you guys see, or tube, this is my oxygen. Once I get up over really 12,000 feet is when I'm going to just start putting it on. So if you're wondering why are you doing this flight down to Australia, typically you fly all around Papua New Guinea, but we do fly for missionaries. And here, Papua New Guinea, we do not have Amazon. So this is our Amazon. I'm an Amazon driver today. And uh, yeah, so if missionaries want to get something, if I want to buy something, I order it from one of our suppliers down there or off Amazon or something, have it shipped to a guy. He prepares loads, we go down there. And what that allows us pilots to do is to keep current on international flying and going down there in case of a medevac. So if we have someone that has a serious accident or something, we fly them down to Cairns, Australia. That's the closest area that has um, a little bit better hospital services.
And if someone needs to get surgery or something like that, that's the place that we want to go. So this is what's keeping me current to go down there. It's going to be a beautiful flight down there, thankfully. Uh, there we are, right on track. Let's go ahead and hit nab, nab on our autopilot. That's going to connect us into the magenta line. We're just going through 5,600 now, all the way up to 18,000. Our next frequency is going to be a 118, or correction, 119.3. So I'm going to get that set up now. I'll be on with this frequency until I get probably up to Linux. And then once I'm out of their airspace under for that level, so if you zoom up here, you can see it tells you what altitudes that they go to. So this one starts at 9,000, it goes up to 24,000. And then the next one starts at 15, but I'll, so I'll still be in the controls airspace. So actually, you know what, I'm trying to think. I'm actually gonna be on with them until COPSO. And then that's probably right about here, right, up right there. Now uh, this is 15,000. So they'll probably actually transfer me off once I get up to there. And then we actually go through a dead zone Right up here at Copso, where we're too far out from New Guinea to get good frequency, and we're too far out from Australia to get a really good clear call. So we've got about 15 minutes of the, this awkward, like, they want us to contact Australia, but we can't contact them, they can't hear us, or they can't Thank hear you us. Tango Mike, and five miles on runway heading, when ready, make a right turn, trick And we can't hear them. Clear right turn, direct, present position, direct to stop. Tango, Bravo Mike. Well, let's go over some paper with you guys so you guys can see what is required to do an international flight from Papua New Guinea down to Australia. So paperwork usually takes me about an hour, probably, if I'm quick. Probably 45 minutes at absolute fastest if I've done a few of them in recently. But this time it took me a lot longer because I haven't done a flight down to, I mean, I did a Cairns flight maybe like two and a half months ago with Brad just to get me back into flying down there. So this is my first flight down there by myself in probably about a year and a half or so, maybe even two years because I've taken the other guys down when I was doing training. So it's been a while. So usually I, I haven't done paperwork in a really long time, but we have this huge Excel sheet that walks us through step by step and we have instructions that basically say, do this, then do this, then email this person, and then save this file. So it makes it very easy. If we didn't have that, it would take so long to do the research on figuring out how, how to do it properly. So when I finish my paperwork, I've got probably, well, let's just see here. I have a gen deck, a general declaration when I leave Papua New Guinea. I'll just throw up some blank ones on the screen so you guys can see what they look like. But our Excel sheet fills it all out, tells us when we leave, or we're leaving the airport of Port Moresby at 8 a.m. and I'm getting down to Cairns at 11.15. And then it'll have my name down here, it'll have my date of birth, and then what duty on the plane I'm doing, whether it's captain or first officer or doctor, nurse, whatever, that's what those are, my nationality, and then my passport number. So that's what this is. So when I go down into the um, departure out of Port Moresby, I drop off Gendex at Customs, typically first, and they stamp it and do all their stuff. Then I'll take one of those copies over to Immigration. They will stamp my passport. We don't have crew licenses here because we're not an operator that is basically working like that. We can get a crew license. We have had in the past, but we don't now. So they actually stamp it on the way out and stamp it on the way back in. It's kind of a pain, but that's what we do. So those are the only two things that I have to do to be able to leave Papua New Guinea. Okay, so then secondly, I have a jet deck when I leave Cairns. So basically this is what I'm gonna be sending down to a border force, border control down in Australia. Bye, Romeo, 5 miles on runway, heading 10, right heading 270, vectors for separation. Right heading 270, bye-bye, Romeo. Next, I have the inwards crew report. This is just showing who's on the plane. Just myself today, but if we had a doctor or nurse, they'd be on here, or if I had a co-pilot with me today. 
Howard's crew reports next. That's when I leave cans. Who's going to be on board? Nothing special. Next we have impending arrival report. This is just letting them know when I'm planning on getting there. And I'm sure there's some other things with that, but I don't really know. I just know how to sign my name and fill out the paperwork. Then we have the arrival report. So I've got two of these. When I land and get on the ground, I have two of them that I actually have to give to their, I believe it's immigration. They come out to the airplane and make sure that I don't have food on board, or if I do, if I have trash or things like that, I give it to them. They make sure that I've sprayed my pesticides so that I can get cancer. Five three Romeo, track adjustment and right, heading two nine zero. Expect direct to escale once clear of traffic. Right, heading two nine zero. Papa, extra Romeo. I spray this down underneath the pods before I leave, and then about halfway when I get there, I spray it up here as well. Then once I land, I have to sign my landing time, and then. Yeah, let's see. And then after that, then it's just our uh, pesticide stuff, just showing that, yeah, this is the same serial number. We've got two of them, but we only have to use the blue ones now. We used to have to use a different one as well. But yeah, uh, just making sure that the serial number matches up with our paperwork. And the last one is the crew declaration. This is the same thing that you would fill out on an airline if you're going into Australia. So it looks really similar, basically saying, are you you know, claiming anything as you go into the country. We don't have anything, so... November Alpha X-ray, descent 6000. 6000, November Alpha X-ray. And then we'll do the same when we come back to Papua New Guinea. So that's the paperwork that we have to get out of Papua New Guinea and into Australia. I thought it'd be kind of interesting for you guys to see what it actually we have to fill out. It's about ready to pass 15,000, so just about up there now. Papa Tango Echo, contact Mosby Radar, 119 at decimal 3. 119 decimal 3, Papa Tango Echo. Mosby Radar, Papa 2, November Tango Echo, passing 15,200 on climb, 18,000. Papa 2, November Tango Echo, Mosby Radar, good morning, area QNH 1009. 1009, Papa Tango Echo. Right, so we've got 1009er, our tem altimeter setting, and then also on our standby as well. It's kind of interesting. Here in Papua New Guinea, the transition level, I believe, is at 20,000 feet. Or I think the States is 18,000 feet. And in Australia, it's 10,000 feet. So, yeah, it's, when I go into basically passing COPSO is when I'll switch to my standard Barrow 2992, or I'm not sure what it is here on this. I think it's probably pretty close to what it is now, pretty close. So yeah, that's kind of interesting when you are passing different international borders and stuff. Well, because we're all the way up here at 18,000, our indicated airspeed, I'm guessing, is probably going to be like 122, something like that. Supposed to be 119, just 3 kilo, Sierra Delta. All right, now that our speed's up, showing 120, 121, we're going to bring our ITT, now that we're up over basically... 12, 13,000. Now we're actually going to be limiting our engine performance by our ITT at 700. Delta, the outside, the controller space, on descent, 17,000. No reported traffic or CTA. Enter control space, on descent, 17,000. Delta. Uh, we're information, Yankee. Inbound two cans. Information to Yankee is now current with three changes. The wind is one one zero degrees at one five knots. Maximum crosswind of one two knots. Temperature three zero and the QNH now one zero one four. Information Yankee. There you go. I was trying to listen to it, but he's just too busy, and thankfully he just broadcasted it for everybody. So Yankee is there. 110 at 15 with a crosswind of 12 knots, temperatures 301014. We'll switch that once we start our descent. 7172, thanks. Clear to leave and re enter control to airspace. Descending 7000, no reported IFR traffic. Clear to leave and re enter control to airspace. Descending 7000, pencil line 1782. Papa, Tango, Echo, delays into Cairns. For sequencing, adjust speed to cross two zero miles to run Cody at time one three, and then publish speed. Advise if you require a vector to help meet that. Sort across, two zero miles to run Cody at time one three, Papa. 
Two number tango echo, and I'll let you know if I can't make that. Negative, Foxtrot Mike Zulu, IFR, citation 2 3 b take these Mariba, full Mariba, runway 1 0. Okay, I was hoping he would not say that. Foxtrot Mike Zulu, I've got to get all those things set up. 4 7 0 2, standby for traffic. Okay, let's come up here. Foxtrot Mike Zulu. Right about there. Let's do, uh, enter, create user waypoint. We'll go user zero up to temporary radio at distance uh, off Evan, of Cody. Uh, no you can contact uh, Kent's approach on one two six days four one. Probably here uh, Golf November and I want to see Cody. Everyone thanks out. Fox from Michael. Do Cody. I don't know what the radio is, but I think it's probably that. So let's go down down to two zero zero miles. There we go. Right. Back up here. Recent user zero zero. Let me go heading mode for now. Recent Sarah Japan 952. Request this air for the 340. Did you write that down for the 3 HL? Here. Liabird 11. Contact oh, center 133. Three 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 down. 33 days for zero. Liabird 11. Good day. Bonds are 913. Contact center 133. Three decimal 2. I'll be all the way down to 100 knots. It's at 1-1. One, one. Uh, that means I have to even slow down even more and hand flag because now it's below 100 knots. That is really annoying. Aussie 377, contact center, 127, base 4-6. 127, base 4-6, Aussie 377, okay. It's going to be for the next 20 minutes. Uh, dude. Let's bring it back up to 100 knots so I can put my autopilot on so I'm not like hand flying it, slow flying it now for the next 21 minutes. Center Papa Tango Echo, uh, can you do time 1-1 one, one at 2 zero miles to run, Cody? Uh, sorry, I think uh, there was maybe two in there at once. Was that Papa 2 November Tango Echo calling? A firm, unable to do time 1-3, uh, can you maybe just give me some vectors off? Papa 2 November Tango Echo, uh, A firm, to help meet that time, turn right heading. Two three zero. Expect to track back to Cody. When ready, descend to one zero thousand. Cairns Q and H is one zero one four. Turn right, heading two three zero. Descend one zero thousand. One zero one four. Papa Tango Echo. Thank you. I don't want to have to fly it. And let's put our altitude down to 100,000 and start heading on down nice and slow. Let's just do four or five hundred feet per minute. 1014, because I am starting my descent now, so we're going to go up to 1014. Standard barrel, I guess, is 1011. So 1014 on our standby as well. Let's go ahead and get our approach in here. We want the ILS Whiskey 15. And we're going to do via gun row. But uh, minimums we can put on at 390. Oops, 390. We're just gonna load that in there for now because we're not using, we're not ready for it yet. Part two, November Tango Echo, resume our navigation, clear direct to Cody to rejoin the star, descending one zero thousand. Reclear direct Cody to join the star down to 10,000 for PAW 2 Nova Plane Echo. All right, let's head on over here. Flight plan, hit direct Cody, enter, enter. Our power back in. Nav, nav on our autopilot, so it reconnects with our magenta brick line. And now that we're speeding up, we'll also increase our descent profile just a little bit. And Papa 2, November Tango Echo, can I just confirm, uh, can you stay back at a reduced speed, just to help meet that 1-3, otherwise I might actually give you another vector. Apologies, slow now, Papa Tango Echo. Alright, wish you would have said that the first time. <laughs> Bring our door right up back down to 400 again. We're out of the way. Papa 2, November Tango Echo, contact Kent's approach on 118 day small 4. Thanks for your help, and just confirm with uh, Kent's Approach if they want you to remain at reduced speed. Wilco, Kent's Approach, 118.4, good day, Papa Tango Echo. 
Chance Approach from Paul 2, November Tango Echo with you. We're passing 7,700 on descent, 7,000. Reduced speed, just requesting um, if I can um, head back up on my regular normal speed. Paul 2, November Tango Echo, Chance Approach, good day, and resume normal speed. Resume normal speed for Paul Tango Echo. Okay. Line 154, when ready to send 5,000. Yeah. Couldn't figure out how to say when that. When ready 5,000, <laughs> line 154. Because I never say these things coming down here, but it's just a couple of dives. Ken's approach, off uniform Sierra, left 030, climbing right. 3,000, passing 1,900. Uniform Sierra, Ken's approach, identified climb by speed to 10,000. Climb by speed, 10,000, off uniform Sierra. And we're going to go ahead and put tower in here as well. Let's see, tower 124.9, just for my next one. And then we could put down here 121 decimal seven for ground. There we go. As many things done as I can now, so that I don't have to worry about it later. Okay, that's why he would slow me down as we got another airplane just ahead of me. We're not gonna go ahead and slow down on this approach like I normally would. For one, it's a VFR day. There's also bigger airplanes that are much faster than me wanting to probably come in from behind me. So I'm just gonna keep probably around 140 on the way down and then kind of more short final, then start getting my flaps and everything in. Report Tango Echo, do you prefer the ILS or a visual approach to keep the uh, speed up? Uh, ILS is fine, Report Tango Echo. Report Tango Echo, we're to clear the ILS from 915 approach. Clear the ILS, 15 approach, Report Tango Echo. Remaining 5,000 to get to gun row, then down to 3,700. Pretty quick descent, so we can join in with our glide slope and actually head on down on. Zulu, Zulu over power, I think, turn left on hitting 330. Turn left hitting 330, Zulu, Zulu over power. Right, 10 seconds to go for the next section, down to 3,700 feet. Let's go on down 1,000 feet per minute. We'll hit approach on our thing, switch over our CDI to our localizer. I just slow down just a tiny bit so I don't mess my glide slope because I have before and then you have to hand fly it all the way down, it's a huge pain. Resume and navigation, clear direct to Kimi. And that direct to Kimi, follow 493. Unity 7240, descend to 3700, cleared IOS, runway 15 approach. There we go. Descend to 3500, correction at 3700, clear IOS approach, runway 15, Unity 7240. All right, 3,700 feet, you guys can see we're just coming up to our next one. We'll be joining in with the glide slope soon. It's just a little bit above us right now. But as we're coming in a little bit closer. All right, just about ready to come down on the glide slope. Our glide slope is going to turn green. And then we're going to start pointing over here. And if it doesn't, then I'm going to do it manually. Bye-bye, thank you. Echo, contact tower, 124, day small night. Good day. 124, day small night. Good day, Papa. Thank you, Echo. Can Tower Papa 2, November Tango Echo, established in the ILS 15. Papa 2, November Tango Echo, Ken's Tower. Well, when the ILS works perfect and you've got everything set up correctly, it's actually kind of really boring going down, and up, especially with autopilot. But I'm not complaining, I like my autopilot. <laughs> Just a last minute check, all the lights are on. Once we land, this will switch over to our taxi. Looks like 25, sign heading left 030, cleared for takeoff. On left heading 030, cleared for takeoff, get start 25. All right, I'm just keeping my speed all the way in. We're going to be landing at time 28, so I just got to remember that number so I can write it down on my paperwork once we land. Or I think it's immigration that wants that. You have a plane sitting there on Bravo 2 waiting to take off, so I'm going to land. Papa Tango Echo, clear to land. Clear to land, Papa Tango Echo. And just taking your POB and the information you got. Autopilot off, P -P top forward. Hotel Zulu Quebec. Hotel Zulu Quebec. 
Come on down, get our flaps in here in a second. Hold off as long as I can, just so people are sitting on the edge of the runway for nothing. I know how annoying that is for me. It's on 25, contact approach. Minimums, minimums. Thank you. There's 10 degrees of flaps. We've been cleared to land, prop and harness is done. We've got flaps to go. But I wouldn't shear over these trees. Yeah, yeah, we got a helicopter Victor, Charlie Victor, South of Paris. degrees. Victor, Charlie Victor, Cairns Tower. We'll go full flaps, checklist complete. Skytrain 1791, line up. Line up, Skytrain 1791. Papa uh, Tango Echo, kind of ground one to one decimal seven. Contact ground, Papa Tango Echo. Can't ground, Papa two, no, but Tango Echo, Bravo three, requesting taxi, Bay one Echo. Papa two, no, but Tango Echo, taxi Charlie two to Bay one Echo. Charlie two to Bay one Echo, Papa Tango Echo. This feature on four flight where it actually has like a progressive tax taxi is so handy. And the fact that you can even draw on the taxi chart is so nice as well. All right, here's Charlie two. Thank you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Something a little different than the normal kind of just mountain flying and stuff. I enjoy coming down here because it's something different. This is a challenge for me. Doing radios is not one of my strong points by any means. Um, so it's always a bit of a stretch for when I come down here, especially coming in just having different accents that I'm not used to, different procedures that I'm not used to. It, it is a challenge for me, So, but I enjoy it. I, I definitely enjoy doing something different than the same thing. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you guys liked it. And also, check out the link down below for a coffee table album. I know you guys are going to love it. Um, I've got it available now on my website. And hope to be able to get it out to you guys for Christmas. And if you're watching this some other time, go check it out anyways because it's really awesome. Covering all the cool places I get to go in Papua New Guinea. With drone shots and some culture you know, information about the places that I get to go to. It's, it's a really, really cool book. And also, for the month of December, I'm running some killer deals on my Patreon page. You're going to have to go check them out. I've got some crazy deals where I'm giving you guys away a bunch of stuff, a lot of value. And you're getting like three years of content plus the things I'm giving away. So check that out.